Ladies and gentlemen, friends and fellow travelers, it's my immense pleasure to now announce our next guest, uh, Ibrahim Mahama, uh, who lives in uh, Tamale in Ghana and the BFA and MFA in painting from Kwame University of Technology. And actually started in 2012 um, with his epiphany of making these amazing occupations, which is a series of uh, them. Some of sculptures uh, are very big installations, itinerant installations, uh, where he works with migrant communities using found materials, something you know extremely relevant, of course, even uh, the uh, refugee emergency in Europe, using uh, very famous youth fiber sacks. Uh, many of you might have seen this very big installation in the Arsenale. Uh, last year in Occupy of Biennale, the biggest piece in the whole Biennale in the Arsenale is the big, big uh, corridor. And together with Simon Caste, we visited uh, last summer Ghana for our 89 plus research. Um, we saw another extraordinary piece uh, by Ibrahim, where he basically covered the entire museum uh, of Accra in Ghana with the same uh, materials, so the entire museum became a kind of a um, uh, an example of, uh, of traces, of memory, of fragments. Um, it's our dream come true that Ibrahim can be here today. A very, very long time. Um, thank you very much for uh, inviting me, first of all, to come and give this talk. Uh, um, I will give a very brief introduction in terms of my practice and what I do, and then it will be followed by a film which I made uh, recently with this uh, drone that I started working with. Um, So um, just to start with, I, um, I started my, my background is in uh, painting and sculpture. So I, uh, I studied at the Department of University of Science and Technology in Accra, uh, no, in Kumasi, uh, Ghana. Um, and Kwame Nkrumah was one of, uh, he was the first prime minister of Ghana, and he was also the first president. He was the one that actually um, took independence for Ghana, and he had a lot of ambitions and dreams, and he also worked a lot with uh, the Soviets on some projects that they did in uh, Ghana in terms of uh, building silos and also his um, housing units, which after his overthrow in 1966, most of the projects never got uh, realized or finished. So you have uh, a remnant of all these projects within the country or scattered across the capital or some of the cities. And recently I've been very much interested in these things. But before that, when I was uh, an art student, I was always interested in the relationship between the body, stroke, and materials. Uh, earlier on, with my early works, I used to make plaster casts. So I used to um, use plaster of Paris, specifically the ones that are used in the decoration of buildings, on ceilings. So construction has always been very, very important in my work. So I was actually casting the skin of uh, models to so actually pour this material and then when the material hardened, I would take the material out of it and then I would make a sculpture out of it. And I was very much interested in the relationship between the material and then also the body. And when it meets and it departs, the different kinds of, if you like, traces that are left in between these two spaces and what they become when exhibited. Um, of course, I've always been very much interested in the public space, so I was always interested in ways in which art could be exhibited, especially in the context of Ghana. Because in the past, historically, we had a very um, extensive history of uh, hotels providing spaces for artists to show their work. And in time, it became like a norm, so artists would always criticize hotels for not giving them their lobbies. And I said to myself, there are so many spaces around the city you're complaining we don't have museums, so you cannot make art, but actually you don't need a museum to make art. Actually, the art itself of the 21st century has to be something that has to emerge out of all these uh, crises and all these um, um, discourses. So I, um, I, began, I became interested in materials a lot, and uh, this material, which is the jute sack, became one of the materials I became very much interested in. And, uh, it is important to know that uh, when I visited the um, two, uh, 2012 documenta by Caravan Christopher Kadia, 
I became very much inspired to become a better artist because of the choices that she had made. Um, so when I went back home, I immediately started thinking um, about how I could use my materials radically in terms of thinking about the city, which I've always been interested in. So I started working with the jutsu material. I was previously working with it, but I, which I think was still a bit more conservative. So I started work collecting specifically materials that were used because this specific material is imported into the country from India and Bangladesh for the transportation of cocoa. But it's important to know that it's only used to transport cocoa once and because of international policies and all that uh, diseases and stuff. But when it, after it's used, they then sell it to local merchants who use it to buy rice, millets and other things. But I'm much more interested in the fact that when it's used to buy rice and other things, they use it several times. And the people who use these materials tend to use the material over and over again. And they, uh, we have a very long history of migration also within the context of Ghana. So people tend to travel a lot from rural areas to the capital because they feel that's where they can actually make life for themselves. And um, they tend to put all these kinds of markings on their bodies, like some kind of tattoos, but they are not just for aesthetical reasons. They're, it's much more political uh, and pragmatic in some senses. So. Um, they transfer some of these onto the materials, the objects that they use. And you find it all around uh, spaces within Ghana, so like whether it's on a box or a material or a piece of cloth, and sometimes they invent new systems out of it. So I became very much interested in this sense of opposition between um, um, just uh, that kind of political yeah, situation which is uh, directly on the body and how it translates into these materials. The traces that are left on these materials, when you look at them like uh, on a surface level, tend to have a certain um, aesthetics to it. And I thought working with this kind of aesthetic in relation to the uh, element of collaboration, which is uh, working with uh, most of the migrants who move to these cities and then building these um, kinds of um, objects. Okay, so um, that was flipped through a series of um, um, images and you just... So these are um, kinds of um, gestures of um, having to... Just simple elements of having to um, learn how to write something as simple as that within the system of production, within what we do like in a studio. And the studio is everywhere. I work from... Uh, renting maybe a warehouse space to the streets in my neighborhood because everyone has turned to believe that I'm some kind of a strange guy. Streets, no one actually says anything because they know that <laughs> I'm quite crazy. So, um, so um, and this is um, one of the studios. Um, not, it's not permanent, so all of these things are very temporal. So I never really have a permanent space. Um, in terms of work, it's always moving from one space to the other. And the collaborators I work with specifically are these young women who have migrated a lot from the northern part of the country to the southern part of the country. And also, historically, there's been a lot of segregation within um, Ghana in terms of how we think of different uh, ethnicities and cultures because of the um, because of this um, idea of development. When um, I think after independence. The vision was to be able to distribute uh, resources evenly, but then there was this also federal system of people thinking of using resources for specific uh, regions, which I thought was very stupid. But of course, at the same time, um, this thing has not been resolved over the years, so you have a lot of people moving from one area to the other, and um, it's, it's almost like part of our DNA when you see them moving around the cities. It's almost as if they've been plucked from somewhere and put there. The rights, they don't feel that they have access or rights to even this idea of uh, the, the thing that we call our own states. So I'm very much interested in the precarious nature of all these things and I use them as, um, I use them as a material in the production of the works that I do which are very political rather than like very uh, aesthetical. So, um, some of these images are just of open spaces that we've worked with, so I, 
and uh, we worked with museum spaces. Um, in my university, we had this museum that was, was built that we all felt was very terrible. But at the same time, we needed to work with it one way or the other. So one way to critique it was to cover the entire building. So there was nothing inside. We took all the objects out, and it was one of my MFA projects I did. So we covered both the inside and the outside, and we also installed sound elements and other things within it. So you'd actually feel that the museum, which is supposed to contain objects, suddenly becomes this object, which is contained by a series of uh, materials which contain commodities, which is contained in itself. Um, and uh, so buildings, architecture is very, very important. And I liked very much what uh, Alfredo said yesterday about the responsibility of uh, architects and all that. Um, this is one of the buildings in my university, which is like this tropical modernist architecture. It has the, um, the Great Hall, uh, which we have uh, symposiums and other things in it, which also has, this is the main library. So it's, the idea was to cover up the entire library with the students in it, which they will, most of them were not happy about, but we still went on anyway. <laughs> Yeah so, um, yeah, so just different angles of looking at it and then also, so there's this heavy sense of critique in terms of how the city is organized. Bridges are made sometimes very nonsensical. You think because it's a, an old railway station which was built by the Brit British and most of the railways were built in areas that there were raw commodities that they could exploit anyway. But over time, I thought those spaces could be appropriated. Of course, that over time, the railway was no longer functional. But people who occupy these spaces for local markets and the government always the, the states for some reason which is supposed to be this democratic idea which is supposed to be protecting citizens all of a sudden becomes this uh, terrorizing figure so they build all these um, bridges across uh, cutting the spaces into pieces and actually the work from the Biennale out of bounds was from this project because they had all these signs out of bounds on the bridge because you cannot actually do business on it. In Ghana, we have a different system of actually doing business, which is actually more or less like a street culture. And we're thinking of how we can urbanize our spaces much more without actually thinking about how we can factor um, people who are migrating to the city and how these uh, resources contribute to it. Yeah, so the, the, the collaborators, which are the girls you see in the picture, are uh, part of the collaborators I work with. And most of these spaces that we do these interventions and in, like this building which is in the airport area. You know, Ghana, like the cities are mostly gentrified. So you have all these slum, like most of the images that we saw in the uh, Alberto's presentation. And these things have come to understand that they are more or less universal concerns. And we have to find a way of addressing it. And I think that um, architecture or design or uh, critical discourse to us is one of the very important. So I always see spaces that in some way, yeah, sometimes it's almost, you don't, you will never really be there to experience the work, but I think that I'm much more interested in all these different elements. And of course, the different symbols within the materials in terms of the original symbol, the Ghana Cocoa Board, producing Ghana, and then the sign, which is the body, the, the tattoo which I was talking about, which is there, OB in the middle. So this element of combining different spaces and also the contradictions between them is very important. So um, gentrified spaces within the capital as a, uh, and then making interventions. So it, it takes a very long series of um, um, negotiations, especially with the characters who are responsible for these things, because they never really understand. And uh, in this particular image, I like this very well because uh, in the video you'll see it much clearly, but you have the presidential palace, which is like the White House behind, behind the green area. And you have this um, building that was put up recently, still under construction. And then you have the, the work, which is right here in front. Most of the time you wouldn't notice it. And then you have the slum area and then also this building, which cuts the, uh, the residential area. And, I like this idea that the, almost looking at the image, you could think that the, the colorful building in the middle is the central um, element in the work, but it's actually not. It's actually, the image is actually in critique of this um, kind of a structure. So, um, yeah, so silos, as I talked about, these buildings that are built to contain food, but over uh, 50 years now, they've never been used. So like you have all these dead buildings and monuments within uh, the city. 
that I like to appropriate and use for the work. Uh, this is um, the entire, this is the university I studied in. So I actually went through a series of negotiations to cover the entire buildings. They were inspired by um, drawings from Le Corbusier in terms of um, or, uh, ideas from Le Corbusier in terms of building these accommodation units for students on the campus. But I think it was also an idea to use that as an accommodation unit for like places within the city. But it was never really realized. And then you have this abandoned affordable housing project which was built some time ago, not, never really used. Uh, you have a lot of characters living within it, mostly termed as social deviants like arm brothers and blah blah blah. But I like working within these spaces because I, I've come to understand that it's a very, very precarious situation that we live in. We, and crisis almost becomes like a, it's always a starting point for me. So I'm not really afraid to be robbed or for something to happen when I'm doing a project within this space because there's always some way of some set, so some set of failures that happen. And these projects, it's very important to know that they happen, especially in recent time, all the projects that I've done are simultaneous projects. So there are about maybe uh, six, seven different sites happening all together. So the idea is to be able to connect them through, to connect the spaces in between the city. So the silo, these projects, the university that you saw, the affordable housing projects which you saw, and then all the other images, uh, most of the images I showed are, there's a singular work happening at one different time, but you have to find a way to negotiate yourself in between. But at the same time, they are very temporal. And like the BNL where the materials cover both parts of the buildings, this time around I was also interested in covering one part of the building and leaving the other part. You can see the rubber bags. It's a sign of like occupation, so people live within these, um, within these spaces. Yeah. So animal life, plant life, and other things are very important. So the whole system of uh, ecological system also is something that I tend to be very interested in because of the, this idea of uh, decay within the, within the materials that I work with and the kind of architecture. So the streets in opposition to this idea of uh, occupation, like the things that are happening, and also just path by the people living within these spaces to give you that sense of occupation and also just uh, thinking about the work, uh, the, this occupation in terms of um, the architecture is always very interesting in terms of what it's, uh, uh, its own pre-existence in terms of what it does and how it's been occupied and the use of it as uh, in relation to uh, making this intervention with these materials. Yeah, so. So from here, they are just um, images. I will uh, play the video, and then after the video, uh, through uh, questions, I can give much more elaborate responses in terms of some of the ideas, um, especially with the introduction of intense labor, which kind of characterizes um, these uh, very enormous projects, but at the same time, they are very, very temporal. So there's always a sense of migration. Sometimes I have to transport all these migrants from Accra to other cities in order to do this project and then they sleep in these spaces that are meant for other individuals. In some cases, we've always, like there's always been this sense of attack, like recently we did a project in the university, which was this one. And a lot of people in the university were very surprised to see these characters there because they, a lot of people said, what are you doing here? You don't belong. And I was like, how? Are you the one who belongs here? No one actually belongs within a certain particular space. So it's not just, I think that there's always been a crisis of migration. And recently within uh, um, the, the Europe, I think has been very, very uh, significant or very strong. But I think that it's always also very important to uh, know that there, these things happen every day in other spaces. And then we need to take cognizance of all these things. Okay, so uh, no. sorry. Okay, um, so the insides and then the outsides of the the, the the insides in terms of how the buildings are occupied and how people also uh, interact with it from the outside is very important. So that this. Skeletons of the buildings in terms of the slabs and other things are all things that I take into consideration. So 
it's not just a matter of uh, trying to uh, produce something uh, from the outside. Most of the parts of the work are mostly not, you cannot really experience them because of the, the magnitude of the, the project. So, yeah. Okay, so this is it.
uh, it was done in a time where there is uh, we have the dry season, which is the dust that goes from the Sahara Desert. So that's why the entire landscape seems to be white. doesn't have sound, it doesn't take sound, so most of the sounds in the video are actually collages from other spaces, uh, from uh, most of the spaces that I've actually produced and work in, and uh, I'm interested in this idea of collage, so I like to, in as much as I, the way I treat the material or the spaces I work with, is the same way I treat the, the videos or other things that I produce out of it. It's always a combination of one different space with the other. Before we open it to the floor, I want to ask you one question, which is when we visited your studio in Ghana last summer, uh, it was very surprising we expected all kinds of materials from the yes. installation to be there. But what we actually saw was a drone. Yes. Uh, and you've done experiments ever since with drone technology and with drones. Can you tell us a little bit about how you use drones and what happened since? Yeah, um, <laughs> I realized that um, the human being was always very uh, limited in his capabilities. And I felt that um, with truly assistance of uh, technology, um, yesterday with forensic architecture, when he was talking about uh, the drone strikes, um, it's um, one material, it's one uh, device that has been very catastrophic in terms of its invention. But also, I thought it could present something in terms of how we see the world or how we see the things around us. And through the experiments I did, also in the beginning when I used to look at the 
the Earth with Google Earth and other things. I realized it was this kind of a different relationship with these spaces. And the drone gave uh, me the chance to be able to have this kind of extension of having to look through the city. But whereas you pay attention to every single thing because now you're above the ground and you have to you have a general view. So as you look through the spaces through a series of um, yeah, through a series of movements and other things, uh, things that ordinarily wouldn't have been important to you because you are part of the entire system begin to be important. So I guess I I took it very seriously and this um, I started doing a lot of experiments and that's what actually gave birth to these new projects that I So the footage comes partially from the drones. Yes. yes. Do we have questions from the floor? Got a question here, two questions. Um, thank you, Ibrahim. Um, I very much appreciate that you have this political stance. Um, so I was wondering how do you communicate it um, during your project? Um, do you do that actively or do you think they speak for themselves? And um, how successful do you think you are in communicating your political stance? Um, in terms of the success of these projects, I can never really measure them because uh, I'm interested in um, carrying out these uh, different gestures. And it doesn't just uh, begin or end within uh, when they're installed within these structures or within these architectural spaces. I think it begins with the motivation or intent that I am interested in. So right from uh, choosing or negotiating for those specific sets of materials to working with the collaborators in the studio, to uh, negotiating with either the city authorities or whoever is in charge of these spaces that I'm interested in. Or sometimes just interested in ordinary people living within those spaces because sometimes you have to, um, there, there is this idea that you have to go through a certain kind of authority. But sometimes I'm, even, I'm interested in skipping that and then just uh, negotiating with just ordinary people living within these spaces and then introducing this material. It's very, it's very difficult for it to be uh, successful because first of all, um, it comes out of uh, a certain maybe language that is not very, it's not very uh, prominent or it's not very known or acceptable because if you're trying to make a certain kind of art form or trying to integrate a system within, this, within these ways, then it actually doesn't really um, make a lot of sense. Most of the time when I do the projects and people see it, they actually think there is a construction going on. So you never really make a relationship with art. Sometimes people see it like the museum you saw in Accra. The building was right in the middle of the city for more than 50 years and no one ever knew the building was there. But they passed through the building every day. And suddenly they saw that something was covered and they were like, oh, something exists here. And then they thought, why are they constructing a building? And they walked into the space only to realize it was an art exhibition. And um, um, there is, um, in terms of thinking about the politics of it, um, the president of, uh, the current president of Ghana, is, uh, his, I share a surname with him, so he's called Ibrahim Muhammad, and his brother is, shares the same name with me, Brian Muhammad. So anytime my assistants have to go and negotiate when I'm not around, and they mention my name, they actually think, is this <laughs> bastard of a president's brother who is trying to take over? <laughs> because they've successfully justified the whole uh, uh, country. And uh, the, the, the museum, we, uh, the news, a news uh, crew came to cover it. And they, because I was using cranes uh, and other things in it, and he's a contractor, so he uses a lot of these things. And there's so much, uh, there's always controversy around him. So um, when they were told that uh, Ibrahim Mohammed was actually part of the exhibition and he covered the building, they went on to report on the news that Oh, the students and other art professionals had an exhibition at this museum and Ibrahim Mohammed covered the building and all of a sudden they showed the president's brother's picture. <laughs> so, <laughs> I think it's inevitable to escape from the politics, but one way or the other, the critique is still important whether it's visible or not. Got any more questions? Yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you for this very interesting presentation of your work. I was mostly interested in this simultaneously. Um, uh, realization of these coverings, um, which means that um, what you do is also a temporal on-site mapping in a yes. sense. And I was wondering about the selection of the um, buildings covered. Um, you said some some words about it, um, but it seemed 
that there are different topics about the, so there's the topic of decay of dysfunctional yes. constructions yeah. but then there's also the example of the university building and um, the gentrification issue so are these separate projects or do you connect these issues they are connected work? yeah it's just one single unit that i work with through these different spaces like with this specific project there was one project in uh, Accra, they were across two cities so one in Accra and one in Kumasi but one in Accra comprised of three spaces which was uh, the, uh, the silo, one of the silos which is in the industrial area of Accra where they produce most of uh, the products for consumption and it's, it's been there for many years they even have a tunnel under it which leads to some which was built many decades ago but it's never really been functional and I was interested in uh, this sense of uh, this uh, kind of uh, monuments being very dysfunctional. And I also always think about these things in relation to other things. I think they could serve other purposes if they are not used. Because when it was built, it was actually built by the Soviets. And uh, there was a, because when there was an overthrow and they never really used it, they, there was this uh, kind of uh, propaganda that uh, the Soviets built the silo with their climate in mind. So when you put actually put food stuff in it, which was supposed to be stored uh, for generations, then those uh, in case there was uh, food shortage, uh, the food would actually ferment. So they characterize it with failure. So they never used it for 50 years, and I wonder why it's there for 50 years, and government upon government would never really pay attention to this thing. So I think failure is eminent. It's like really embedded within the system. And we constantly tell ourselves that things are working, but nothing is actually working because we are not even paying attention to the, the city. And um, the other space in Accra was the, the building behind the presidential palace, which was built, which was very controversial. And they have um, this um, uh, kind of uh, housing units there, which is built by an Italian construction company, which owns a lot of real estate in Ghana. And there's also been a lot of controversy in terms of how they've uh, <coughs> taken over spaces in the city, which actually was sent to. And you have the slum area and then houses that were supposed to be uh, to occupy, be occupied by civil servants, which are not, which are now being sold to private entities. So I became also interested in that. And then also there is a building right in the middle of both spaces. But it's, it cuts across, let's say, about 15 to 20 kilometers. So it's a huge space. But because there are some few valleys here and there, when you are at one space, you can see the other space. And when you move to the other space, you can experience the other space. Also, it's within, yeah. So this other space was actually meant to be a bank, which was never completed because the bank got sold out in another bank from uh, Germany, I think. And it's just been occupied by squatters. So I'm interested in these little elements and these different uh, kinds of uh, narratives behind these different sites. And I started working with the geological and survey department, so in collecting archival maps, which in Ghana we always have a bad habit of burning old things, because we always think old things are unnecessary. But I think old things are important because we can learn a lot from them. And um, yeah, so they, uh, I'm collecting some of these maps and then using the work so the work doesn't just end within the occupations that happen. It also extends within drawings and within film and then also these archival maps. And then in Kumasi, the affordable housing, which is meant for civil servants, but never got completed. And the university, which is meant for students, which students live in, but students, the population of students that actually live in these houses are like a very small percentage because they never really finished the construction of these projects. And now we have to use professors' common fund to build hostels that are extremely expensive. So I think that's why sometimes I'm quite snobbish of some of these structures. Uh, it's either I'm very critical about them or I ignore them because they don't tend to have any great significance in terms of the, uh, the uh, what's the name, the word, uh, the inhabitants, the inhabitants of uh, populations within uh, the, the growing cities. I can take one more question. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I'm, I'm very interested in the aesthetics and your own personal aesthetics of using this. And of course, as we like in, let's say, in China, when they're building these new skyscrapers, they cover them with the green kind of uh, uh, plastic nets or the bamboo, etc. Mm -hmm. So buildings look much more beautiful, actually unfinished mm -hmm. in a way, or in process than actually when they're finished. Um, and in a way, you know, many of the buildings you're covering are kind of 
modernist buildings, mm -hmm. and they're kind of an adopted uh, language that's been imported into into your locality, yet you're covering them again with a new aesthetic. Mm -hmm. So I'm very interested, of course, it brings bells from Cristo to wherever, um, to politics, to kind of all the stories of corruption, of failed buildings, etc. And you coat it with a new aesthetic. And I just was curious about your take on this new skin. <laughs> I think the skin is very important. Um, it is important to note that it is uh, somewhat, somehow of a very uh, universal language because um, most of the um, most of the buildings that I work with, like these modernist buildings, you can find uh, replicas of them within other cities and all that. And most of these areas that I also work with, you can find replicas within. There. So it's always my intent that when I do these projects in Ghana or within other spaces, because I do other projects elsewhere. But in using Ghana as a basis, if I do this project in Ghana, it's supposed to carry this universal ideal in terms of what it actually means to uh, <coughs> occupy a space and then uh, develop it over time. But at the same time, the material that I use, there's, there's that sense of decay about them and familiarity, because we are very familiar with this material when we see it. We see it all the time, but then we're never really interested in it when it reaches a certain point of destruction. It's almost as if it's no longer necessary. But I'm interested in it when it's at that point of total like, destruction. And then we can reuse it to, uh, uh, through these series of gestures working within the studio to produce this giant tapestry. And then with this enormous intense amount of labor in terms of having to transport these materials through these different levels of spaces to reinstall them with the notion that there are people also like living at the same time within these buildings. I think it's something that is, is, is kind of uh, poetic in my mind in terms of how uh, people negotiate with their, like, their, with their own spaces. And, I don't know. I, um, I'm just I'm just strongly motivated by it, and I do it irrespective uh, of whatever <laughs> uh, it comes with. Yeah, so I think so. Thank you. Right. Thank you so so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.